do you remember what are fundamental rights fundamental rights are certain basic human rights which are guaranteed to us by the indian constitution so there are basic human rights that are guaranteed by the constitution of india to all its citizens these fundamental rights are enshrined in part 3 of the indian constitution do you remember how many fundamental rights we have in india we have six fundamental rights the right to equality the right to freedom right against exploitation right to freedom of religion cultural and educational rights right to constitutional remedies so these fundamental rights are very important to all of us because they ensure our safety and security and help us to live with dignity and in our overall progress in life now let's assume that i have given you a precious piece of jewelry what do you do with that your initial thought should be how to protect it how to safe keep that piece of jewelry so you will protect it because it is so precious just like that the indian constitution has given us the fundamental rights which require to be protected because they are so precious to us so just giving the fundamental rights is not enough they also need to be protected and enforced or implemented properly thankfully our constitution makers were also aware of this problem they made a solution so that we could protect our fundamental rights so the constitution has given us articles 32 and 226 which provide us the right to approach the supreme court or the high courts respectively which means article 32 helps us to approach the supreme court while article 226 helps us approach the high court to file a writ petition if any of our fundamental rights have been violated so if our fundamental rights have been taken away from us for example if an individual or an entity or organization or even the government body such as the legislature or executive try to take away our fundamental rights or deny us from any fundamental right we can file a writ petition in the supreme court or the high courts so as to get back our fundamental rights now what is a writ petition a writ petition is a petition or an application by a petitioner to the court asking the court to issue a writ to issue a specific writ for the redressal of his grievances so if we have a grievance that is if our fundamental rights have been violated then we can apply for a writ petition that is we put forward an application to the supreme court or high court asking them to issue a specific writ now you must be thinking what is a writ well a writ is a legal instrument in the form of a written command a command or an order to enforce obedience to the orders of a court so if our fundamental rights are violated the supreme court or the high courts can issue a writ which is a written command asking those who are prohibiting us from using our fundamental right to either do something or to stop an act which is causing the violation of our fundamental rights so now we have seen that both the supreme court as well as the different high courts have the writ jurisdiction or the power to issue writs to enforce fundamental rights however the writ jurisdiction of the supreme court and the high courts is a little different let us see how these are different so firstly the supreme court's writ jurisdiction falls under article 32 so as per article 32 we can approach the supreme court to issue a writ now you must remember that article 32 is our right to constitutional remedies so article 32 falls under part 3 of the indian constitution 
and it allows all indian citizens to move the supreme court in case there is a violation of our fundamental rights however the high court's writ jurisdiction falls under article 226 which is under part 5 chapter 5 of the indian constitution and it empowers the high court to issue certain writs in case of violation of fundamental rights and other rights now as we saw before the supreme court can issue writs to enforce our fundamental rights so only if there is a violation of our fundamental rights can the supreme court issue writs so the article 32 has a narrow scope because the supreme court can issue writs for the enforcement of only the fundamental rights whereas article 226 which allows the high court to issue writs can be for the enforcement of fundamental rights or for any other purpose such as even if there is a violation of our legal rights the high courts can still move or issue writs therefore the high courts writ jurisdiction is broader than that of the supreme court now if you have noticed article 32 which gives us the power to apply for a writ petition in the supreme court is under part 3 of the indian constitution and is one of our six fundamental rights that is the right to constitutional remedies so article 32 is a fundamental right whereas article 226 falls under part 5 chapter 5 of the constitution and is not a fundamental right but a constitutional right so in india we have five types of writs what are they the writ of habeas corpus the writ of mandamus the writ of prohibition writ of certiorari and writ of quo warranto these writs can be issued by both the supreme court as well as the different high courts so a writ petition that is a petition that we make to the supreme court or the high courts to issue a writ is filed either in the supreme court which is the apex court of the indian judiciary or the high courts which are the apex of the judiciary at the state levels in india let us start by taking an example to understand the writ of habeas corpus let us imagine that nikhil has been arrested by the police without a warrant he has been kept in police custody and has not been allowed to contact his lawyer he has also not been informed on what grounds he has been arrested so in this situation we see that some of nikhil's fundamental rights are being violated such as article 21 which is his right to life and personal liberty as well as article 22 which is right for protection against arrest and detention in certain cases this article says that if a person is arrested or detained he has to be informed on what grounds he has been arrested as soon as possible he also has the right to consult and be defended by a legal practitioner of his choice along with that he also has to be taken to the nearest magistrate within 24 hours so since all of these fundamental rights are being violated nikhil or anyone from his family on his behalf can move the writ petition for the writ of habeas corpus in the supreme court or any of the nearest high courts so when this writ petition has been submitted the court will call the detaining authority or the authority that has detained nikhil such as the police in this case and the court will ask them to bring the detainee that is nikhil and give reasons for why he has been detained if the reason given by the police seems justified then no writ will be issued however if the reason that has been given is not enough or is unjustified then the court will issue the writ of habeas corpus by this writ nikhil will have to be immediately released from his detention so as we see that the writ of habeas corpus is issued 
when a detaining authority has illegally or unlawfully held a person in police custody or prison or has detained the person somewhere. In such a case, the writ of habeas corpus will make the detained person be released immediately from his detained position. So, the word habeas corpus is a Latin term which means you may have the body. And the court orders the detaining authority to bring the detained person to the court to explain why the person is being detained or held in prison or police custody. And if the reason is not justified or enough, he will be released. The writ of habeas corpus is the most valuable and the most commonly used writ in India. Do you know that the concept of the writ of habeas corpus dates back to the 13th century during the reign of King Henry VII in 1407 and the reign of King Charles I in 1630 illegally imprisoned people were brought to the king's court. So in such a situation efforts were made to give them certain rights so that they could be released from their illegal imprisonment. However, it was during the reign of King Charles II that in 1679 the act of habeas corpus was passed which allowed the judges to issue this writ to release the prisoners. Now, you must be thinking why it is so important? Well, that is because this writ protects an individual from arbitrary executive power in the form of unlawful and indefinite imprisonment and hence guarantees his right to freedom and his right to liberty. If a police authority or a police official takes you into arrest because of say some political influence or some personal gain or for any other reason in an illegal or unlawful manner then the writ of habeas corpus is the one that will come into use. The second writ that we have is the writ of mandamus. Now assume that you live in a colony and you and all of the members of this colony you all get your water supply from the municipal corporation. For some reason, the water supply in your colony is being stopped. So, you are being denied of your right to life and subsequently the right to get clean drinking water. In this situation, you go to your councillor and your councillor authorizes you to write a letter to the municipal corporation. Even after writing a letter to the municipal corporation, they are not taking any action. And on asking them further, they ask for a huge amount of money as bribe. Now you can see that these people have been entrusted with a public duty and are denying to perform it. So in such a situation, when a public authority or a person who has been given a public duty is not performing their duty, you can file a writ petition for the writ of mandamus. Mandamus literally means we command and the writ of mandamus is issued to compel a lower court, tribunal, forum or public authority or official to perform their duty. Now as you can see all of these bodies are public bodies or an official who has been entrusted with a public duty. So that is one of the things that needs to be present. So it has to be a public duty and not a private duty. So as we have seen, the writ of mandamus cannot be issued against a private individual or organization if they have not been entrusted with a public duty. So for example, if your carpenter is not working properly, you cannot file a petition for the writ of mandamus. Now let us assume a juvenile person has committed a murder. A juvenile person is a person who is not an adult. So if a person is below 18 years of age, juvenile persons are supposed to be tried at juvenile courts and not in regular courts. But let's assume that this case is being handled by a regular court. 
So in such a situation, the person can go to the court asking for his case to be taken up in a juvenile court. But if no action is taken, then he can file a petition for the writ of prohibition. This writ of prohibition will ensure that no court is exceeding beyond its jurisdiction. So if the court is dealing with a matter which does not fall under its jurisdiction or if it's exceeding the powers that the law and the constitution have enshrined it with, then the case can be taken up by a higher court after the writ of prohibition will stop this court from proceeding any further. So in the case that we saw, the Supreme Court of the High Courts will look over the case and make the juvenile courts take his case back and the regular courts will stop proceeding with the case of this juvenile convict. To prohibit means to forbid. So if you prohibit someone from doing something, it means that you are stopping someone from doing something. So in the matter of law or in the matter of the writ of prohibition, it prohibits a lower court or an inferior court from exceeding its jurisdiction. A writ of prohibition directs a subordinate court including any tribunal, forum or any other quasi-judicial authority that is any semi-judicial authority to stop doing something that the law prohibits or something that exceeds their jurisdiction. This writ is often issued by the Supreme Court or the High Courts to a lower court, that is a subordinate court, directing it not to proceed with a case which does not fall under its jurisdiction. Similar to the writ of prohibition is the writ of certiorari. Certiorari means to be certified or to be informed. How is it similar to the writ of prohibition? Let us understand this through the same example. So for example, the juvenile convict has already been tried at the regular court and the regular court has given a verdict. So in that case, a judgment has already been passed by a lower court which has exceeded its jurisdiction. Even in that case, the convict can file a writ petition but of the writ of certiorari. So if the jurisdiction has been exceeded and a judgment has already been given, it is the writ of certiorari which is used. So the writ of certiorari can be issued by the Supreme Court or the High Courts against an inferior court or tribunal asking it to transfer a matter to it or any superior authority for proper consideration or re-examination after the judgment has been passed. So when the judgment has been passed, then there is no point of applying for the writ petition for the writ of prohibition, but it is the writ of certiorari which will be used then. Now let us see if you can answer this question. When can the writ of certiorari be issued? When the case is being presented, before the judgment has been passed, during the case or after the judgment has been passed. Yes, the writ of certiorari is issued after the judgment has been passed. That brings us to the last writ, which is the writ of co warranto. If a person has illegally occupied a government office, or if he does not qualify for all of the eligibility criteria and has still been appointed for a government office, then one can file the petition for the writ of co warranto. In this case, the person who is illegally or unlawfully holding a government position will be asked to give reasons as to by what authority he is holding that position and if he cannot answer or if he gives an answer which is not justified, he will be removed from his position. So co warranto is also a Latin word which means by what authority or warrant. So by what authority is the person holding his public office? This writ is issued against a person who has illegally 
or forcefully usurp which means occupied a public office or an office of public nature now how does this writ protect our fundamental rights well it is used to judicially control executive action in the matter of making appointments to public offices and to protect a citizen from the holder of a public office to which he has no right so if the executive has a bias towards someone and by that bias they appoint this person to a public office which he actually does not deserve or he does not qualify for in that case the writ of co warranto will remove him from his position and give it to the person who is actually deserving of that post to understand the writ of co warranto let us look at an example let us look at the case of university of mysore versus c d govinda rao 1963 in this case C. D. Govinda Rao had filed a writ petition for the writ of co warranto in the Mysore High Court as per Article two hundred and twenty six, which allows him to move the High Court in case of violation of a fundamental right. Govinda Rao had filed this petition against Anya Goda, who was holding the position of a research reader in the English Department of Central University, Bangalore. but goda felt that anya did not have the authority or the criteria which was the eligibility criteria to hold this position so he filed a case in the mysore high court the mysore high court looked at the case and saw that anya goda actually had the authority and was qualifying the eligibility criteria to hold that post so it did not issue the writ of co warranto but if he had held the post without having the qualifications which would show that he had illegally or forcefully taken his position then he would be removed by the writ of co warranto so in this video we've seen that we have six fundamental rights which are protected by the issuance of writs by the supreme court and the high courts the supreme court has the power to issue writs as per article 32 of the indian constitution and the high courts can issue writs for the protection of fundamental rights as well as other rights through article 226 of the indian constitution the writs that are available to us are the writ of habeas corpus mandamus prohibition certiorari and co warranto so the indian judicial system through these writs protects our fundamental rights and it is our responsibility as good citizens to not misuse these writs so that is how the indian judicial system protects our rights and thereby ensures justice throughout the country don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the delta step app to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests get all your doubts resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it is rewarding too So register for free now.